Hey, what's up everybody? Dr. Tony Lytle here. I feel led to continue to make videos on my channel, but I think the Lord wants me to make videos kind of talking about my testimony, kind of talking about what he's done in my life as an inspiration to people, but also um, as encouragement for people who are kind of in a tough spot right now. I know there's a lot of believers in tough spots right now. I also wanted to do it as uh, to give my testimony as a way to give people power over the kingdom of darkness because we know that the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony is how you overcome Satan and the kingdom of darkness. So I know this is going to be powerful. I hope that everyone who watches is blessed by this, but I also want to encourage people that the Lord is moving. He is uh, putting people, he's getting people to make videos. He's, he's, he's kind of put it on my heart at least to do this on a regular basis and to start telling people some of the dreams that he's given me. And hopefully in the future, he'll even give me some dreams about other people or, you know, current events or things that are going on that, that I could share with, with you guys. So I wanted to tell you about my, not necessarily my testimony as a believer, but my testimony for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So I've been probably a Christian probably since I was six years old. It's been a while. Um, I was pretty receptive to God. You know, my mom raised me with Jesus in the home. She would pray. She would, you know, even sing songs to me to try to get me to go to sleep. I think uh, she had told me that I had a lot of night terrors as a kid. I don't know if those night terrors were just anxiety or if those were, um, you know, demonic attacks or if those were, you know, like a sleep paralysis. Because I know as an adult what sleep paralysis is, that's certainly a demonic attack. But as a kid, you don't really know that. And as a parent, you, it's hard to tell. Um, but it could have been. It could have been like a night terror, uh, like a demonic attack even as a child, especially if they don't want parents telling their children about the Lord. They're certainly going to try to interfere with that. So I've been a believer for a long time. Now as a teenager, I was kind of like a lukewarm Christian. And, you know, I had that foundation of believing that Jesus was my Savior. And I had, you know, been to church not really involved in in actual church. I was more involved in Bible studies that would come to our house. We were kind of on and off with churches growing up, so it's not like we I was super involved at the church or I was, um, you know, like in a leadership position in a church. It wasn't like that. Um, it was mostly at home that I knew about the Lord, so... I had never really put him in a box. I never really kept him at church. I knew Jesus walked with me, you know, wherever I went, whether it was school or at work. So as a teenager, I was kind of lukewarm. And, you know, that kind of changed um, at the end of my high school years when I really started to get prideful. Uh, I had success with certain things here and there. And I really got prideful. I started to get attention um, for, you know, looks or for sports or for your ability to, my ability to, to sing and um, even maybe a little bit of academics. But when you start to get that kind of attention and <clears throat> you let it get to your head, your head gets pretty big. So your pride's going to inflate like a balloon. So... My freshman year in college, I went through a big depression. The Lord was kind of bringing me back down to earth. And college was hard because I, I uh, went out of state for college. And I was in a different environment. I wasn't eating all that well. I had like cut carbs out of my diet. And I was just feeling depressed. It wasn't a good place to be. And I remember my sophomore year, I had hardened in my heart. So I said... You know, nobody really cares about me, you know, which wasn't true. That was a lie. I just told myself, 
and I told myself, you know, I'm here by myself, you know, I, I just got to do it by myself. And, and I, I told myself all these different lies to make myself feel better, to try to get out of the depression, to kind of hurt myself so that um, I would toughen up and things wouldn't bother me. And I was just going to do it on my own. And so I lied to myself. And, you know, that's taken a long time to heal from all those lies that I had told myself. But really it was, it was the kingdom of darkness. It was, you know, demonic influence lying to me, telling me I wasn't valuable, you know, feeding me all those lies. But it was really up to me to believe those things. And I ended up believing them. What ended up happening was in my senior year of college, this was around 2014, I was about 22 years old. I was starting to get closer to God. I had kind of softened my heart towards Him. I was ready to, I think, walk into a new chapter in my life, a new season. And I think the Lord could kind of feel that. I think the Holy Spirit knew that, you know, there was my time was coming for a new season. So what He ended up doing was, I was starting to listen to a guy named uh, Perry Stone, who's pretty well known. And he, I was listening to his stuff on YouTube because I was, I just started to watch YouTube videos because my smartphone was fast enough back in those days to watch it. So I was just starting to kind of watch it like videos on my phone back at around that time. And I was doing research at the Cleveland Clinic and I would put earbuds in and I would listen to uh, those sermons while I was doing research on, by myself. And one of the sermons, Perry Stone was doing a an event at this ramp. Uh, it must be like a church or something, but it was called The Ramp. And he got up on stage and he had asked, I think it was a group of young people, he had asked the young people, who wants to get baptized in the Holy Spirit? So he was like, I'm going to help you to do that. So I ha hadn't really ever heard of a pastor or anybody like that actually kind of present that opportunity or encourage people to get baptized in the Holy Spirit. I rarely ever hear about it. I, I never hear pastors talk about it. Rarely. Uh, maybe the pastors that are kind of like spirit-filled will talk about it, or maybe the Pentecostals will, will talk about it. But I mean, growing up in Pennsylvania, not a whole lot of Pentecostals where I grew up. So you, you just don't hear people talking like that. So I was pretty interested. So I was like, yeah, I'm going for it. So he gets up there and he he's kind of going through kind of preparing your body, preparing your mind for receiving the Holy Spirit, um, asking the Lord to forgive you of your sins, kind of wiping the slate clean so that the Holy Spirit can come in to the vessel, to your body. And then he kind of encouraged us to pray and do that. And as I was doing that, I actually felt this spiritual electricity. It was kind of like a fire and an electricity and kind of like a wind all all wrapped into one and it was a sensation that started in my feet but it started from my feet and it started to come up my legs up my body and all the way to the crown of my head and it was this moving something was moving inside my body but it wasn't like in my organs it wasn't in my physical body it was a movement deeper so it was definitely a spiritual movement so the you could kind of feel like there was like a wind or you could feel like there was some sort of energy that was moving it was flowing it was moving there was it was like pulsating like in my body and i kind of like i was standing up at that point and i kind of sat back down almost in reverence and i closed my eyes and uh i heard from the father that was like the first time i've i've really heard from god the father and it wasn't audible but it was in my it was in my mind and essentially he told me I want you to tell anyone who's willing to listen about my son. And that was it. That was the message. So he had given the command. He had given, he had told me my marching orders and it was really up to me to go out and to execute on that. And then the Holy Spirit kind of took over and the Holy Spirit wanted me to try to speak in tongues. <coughs> and I had never spoken tongues. I've heard of speaking in tongues before, but I had never tried it. So I kind of tried it and it was kind of awkward didn't really come out all that well. I didn't really have confidence in it when I initially tried to speak in tongues. It just kind of sounded like gibberish. But 
what I ended up learning was as you get better at it, as you kind of get comfortable with it, it just comes out and you can kind of control when it comes. And then sometimes you kind of get like a feeling or an unction to kind of speak in tongues. But you, you kind of hone that skill as, as time goes on. So after that point, most of my doubt, pretty much all of my doubt in the Lord kind of vanished. Like he pretty much burned it out of me. So I was kind of on fire for the Lord. I wasn't lukewarm anymore. I was on fire for the Lord. And I started telling everybody, I really didn't have any fear. I was telling everybody, do you know Jesus? Like, like, are you saved? And it would just come up in casual, casual conversation. I would tell people that I was close with. I was telling people that I wasn't close with. So I really just wasn't afraid. I wanted people to be saved. I wanted people to know and to experience what I experienced. And you get a lot of kind of puzzled looks because people have never really been asked that. And people don't really, they kind of look at you funny because they're not used to somebody who's actually passionate about the word and passionate about saving people and talking about Jesus. So I would get responses like, you know, well, you know, I've gone to church before and, and you know, I don't really know. And people don't really know how to respond to it when you, when you truly ask them straight up. So at that point from 2014, even till today, I've really kind of honed that skill of, of speaking in tongues. And I've uh, spoken, I've been speaking in tongues more and more since that point as my confidence grew and as I started to see more supernatural activity in my life, I really equated that to speaking in tongues. Um, so I've seen angels, I've had demons attack me and kind of threaten me and try to cut off my voice. And I can make videos about that as well in future videos to kind of give you encouragement that, that the Spirit of the Lord and the presence of the Lord is and His, His name is much greater than any sort of, you know, demon or any sort of entity that tries to come against you. Uh, so his name is higher than all names. So I wanted to give you that testimony as an encouragement uh, that you're not alone in the fight. And for those who are not believers, I want to encourage you to ask the Lord, ask God if he's real, ask that if you have a lot of doubt about him, just ask that he make himself known to you. And do it not in a mocking sense, but do it in a, a genuine sense. I want to know if you're real. If you're real, I want to have a relationship with you. Um, I need help. Please help me. If you humble yourself and you truly ask for help, he will help you. You don't have to be a believer. He will help you. And he'll want a relationship with you, but you kind of have to humble yourself. You have to ask him. He's not going to force himself on you. So like and subscribe this video if you like this kind of content. I will continue to put this kind of content on my personal page. The Dr. Tony Lytle personal page on YouTube. And I will continue to make more of this uh, spiritually minded, you know, Christian kind of content on this page you know, prophetic kind of content. And, you know, if you have any questions, you can put those down below in the comment section. And you can even give me um, ideas for future videos. If you want me to talk about a certain topic, we can discuss that. I think that would be uh, pretty powerful. So I will see you on the next one. Be encouraged and put your faith in the Lord and not in yourself. Uh, be blessed, guys. See ya.